Well, hey, my friends, you're watching Wired Up Retro. It's episode number 88. Today's episode is all about the Atari Game Station Pro, which is a little Atari emulation box that uh, basically enables you to play a plethora of Atari game system games as well as other system games. So we're going to have some fun today showing you a couple of very unique controllers that you wouldn't think could work on this game system, but can. And I've accomplished this with a couple of unique adapters. Actually, it'll just plug a single adapter in and get it working. So uh, this is the Atari VCS joystick, which uh, basically has the top fire button and a secondary button right there. It's got a uh, home button, or you can say a guide button with an Atari symbol on it. And then uh, what appears to be a start and select button, although I think on the VCS they call them uh, some other names. But ultimately, we're going to get that working on the uh, Game Station Pro, as well as this controller, which is the Hypercan Trooper 2, which has the top two buttons and also shoulder buttons for firing and uh, a start and select as well. So ultimately uh, we've got a big plans today to show you how to accomplish this using an adapter or two and um, we've got a lot of plans on playing some games that's for sure. So um, plug yourself in we're gonna go ahead and get started here and have some fun. Now before we do anything I do want to show you the controllers that will innately work on the Atari Game Station Pro got obviously its own controller, the joystick, but also a PS4 and Xbox One controllers will work on the system, which is kind of extra cool. Notice I've got them I got plugged in. Uh, you can't use them wirelessly, but you can use them plugged. And so um, another thing that's worth mentioning here is that I uh, created a YouTube short, which is a little commercial for a product that I'm putting out there. And this is a product that's um, designed to make the paddle a little bit bigger. And there, it comes in two sizes, so you can get this on my Etsy store. Uh, pretty nice little paddle, I would say. Definitely cool. Now, in order to get these uh, plugged into the Game Station Pro, you need a regular USB-A to Type-C um, OTG cable. They come in various types and sizes. Uh, all these are going to be uh, able to accomplish the job, and they're quite cheap. So, yeah, you'll definitely need one of these controller adapters. Now something very interesting that I showed in Wired Up Retro episode 86 is that you can actually get Xbox 360 controllers to work in the games. They won't work in the menus, but once you've entered a game in the Game Station Pro, uh, it allows for, for that controller to work. And the same applies to Switch wired controllers, maybe not the Pro controller, but standard Switch wired controllers. They'll work within the actual games once you get a game started in the Game Station Pro just not the menus. So I think that's kind of an interesting uh, thing. And one thing I've tried since, you know, that episode came out is the Mad Cats uh, game stick, which was designed for X Arcade. Um, and back in the day, you know, there were some spinner games or paddle games that you could use this on. The paddle won't work um, with this plugged in, but the joystick is a wonderful analog joystick. Uh, I think it works really great for playing Missile Command on the uh, Game Station Pro. And there's multiple buttons, so you can play the original arcade version with the three base missile command, which is kind of extra awesome. So I just thought I'd point that out. If you own this controller, uh, you might end up having a lot of fun with your Game Station Pro. So really, the main heart of today's video is about getting these controllers working on the Atari Game Station Pro. This is a Hyperkin uh, Trooper 2. I've reviewed this on one of my other Wired Up Retro episodes, so you can check that video out. and It feels great in the hands. This is the Atari VCS joystick. It just basically has two fire buttons, the primary and secondary. It actually has a paddle on board uh, by swiveling that, but this is not going to be uh, utilized. You'll just be able to use this with the adapters I'm going to be showing in use with it. Let's talk about those adapters right now. So first and foremost, I'm going to show you the Cronus Max Plus, and this is a programmable uh, controller adapter, and I'll be able to program it so that this can work fully, and also this can work fully as well. So that is a, a nice little adapter. It's no longer in production, but you can pick them up on Amazon.com as of now, and you can also find them on eBay. Um, if you want to find a used one, go to eBay, because that gives you the best price. Now, um, if you are interested in the latest and greatest product from that company, um, that company is now making the Cronus Zen, and that's been out for a few years, and it's still in production, so you might benefit. This one will only work, actually, with 
the, uh, the Atari VCS joystick. Uh, it does not work, unfortunately, with this. And the reason is that the uh, Cronus Zen is only really supposed to work with official console controllers, which this is kind of a generic PC controller. But for some reason, it does work pretty well with the VCS controller. And uh, I thought that was interesting. So you could either use either of these to get this working, but for this one to work, you can only use this one, the Cronus Max Plus. So anyway, um, just thought I would tell you about that. Oh yeah, and another thing, um, there are generic PC controllers like this ancient GamePad Pro made by Gravis. That's a USB controller that I would probably want to see, see if that can get working. And also PlayStation uh, 3 controllers. It would be nice to be able to see if a PS3 controller works. Now, you know, this isn't terribly exciting, but what I would really, really like to see would be my Tron joystick that I had made on one of my other Wired Up Retro episodes getting that to work on the GameStation Pro, at least for the joystick, the Tron joystick and the uh, buttons. So probably not the trackball and the spinner, but, but that at least. So that would be pretty cool. So we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll give it a try. Now another controller that I want you to take a look at that I own is the C64. And this is made by uh, Retro Games Limited. And it was in 2018 that these came out, made in China. But anyway, the C64 has a whole lot of buttons on board. It's a USB controller. So um, yeah, we'll see if we can get this working with the uh, Atari GameStation Pro. So first we'll concern ourselves with the uh, Hyperkin Trooper 2 joystick, which is a USB end. And you've got the uh, OTG cable plugged with the uh, Cronus Max Plus. It's getting ready to receive a USB connector. I'll put that right in there. And it's set on zero, which means there's no program running in it. But I've got some programs in here. Uh, number one, two, three, and four have nothing to do with the GameStation Pro, but I'm gonna move it over to number five, which is the program that I've programmed to work with this. And so um, I'll show you in a couple of minutes how to program that in the Cronus Max Plus. But while I've got it up and running, let's go ahead and play a game with this. All right, we got my Hyperkin Trooper 2 all plugged in, and I'm gonna go ahead and start the game. You can see I can basically get it working in the menus. I don't actually have to turn these off. Uh, these will work simultaneously. So that's kind of neat, neat how that works. All right, we'll play a little bit of Space Raid, which is essentially a Mega Mania game. It's a uh, knockoff of the game Mega Mania. Okay, so basically when you're playing this with this controller, there's so many buttons you can accidentally press. I would recommend that you try to make sure you keep your finger away from that and keep your finger away from this and just press this button only. Okay, so let's press the start button. Here we go. Yeah, so it, I want to show you the Atari VCS controller connected. Okay, we'll go ahead and remove this and we'll move it to uh, we'll pick this up here. I've got a second program that's on board the Cronus Max Plus. I've put it, uh, let's get it over to that program. Okay. And we'll go ahead and press this button to get out of the game. You press this Atari uh, symbol button to go back. It's like a home button or guide button. If you were using this controller, in order to get that button pressed, you have to press these two buttons equally at the same time, simultaneously. So just letting you know, I did program that, that in as a special uh, feature of that controller. All right, so yeah, let's try uh, the game Get Gravatar. That's the arcade version. And on this game, you're going to be um, uh, basically thrusting with this firing with this button. Okay, so we'll give it a try. There we go. All right. Now thrust on over to this sector. Okay, so we have two gun emplacements that I need to eliminate here. Uh-oh. Need to get back over here.
Oh, I thought I got him. All right. There we go. Once you got the two gun emplacements, you can leave and let's get out of here. All right, yep, took care of that mission. All right, well, let's head on over to the ringed world right over here. This one has a lot more gun emplacements. One, two, three, four, I think. No, five, yeah, four. Okay, I'm gonna start working on the first one. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Whoa! <laughs> I should get a bonus point for that one. All right. Whoa. Narrowly, narrowly avoided the ground on that one. Uh oh, no. <laughs> All right, so there's another controller that I'm interested in showing you. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this one. Let's put it back on the, the program that I was using for the Hyperkin Trooper 2. And yeah, I'm unplugging this. And okay, so I now plugged in my DualShock 3. We're gonna play a little bit of the arcade version of Night Driver. And we'll see how it goes. Now I have a, uh, a unique PS3 controller that I'd like to try with this game. So I'm gonna pause it. Oh, okay, I'll just unplug it. All right. So this PS3 controller actually has a wireless connection. It's called the Thrustmaster Run and Drive, okay? Looks like we are connected and it's got a little steering wheel. So let's try it. Now this game I think was put on board the uh, Atari Game Station Pro in a way that it would work with the digital controllers that it came packaged with. Oh my goodness, we're really flying here. <laughs> so what I'm getting at is I think they kind of programmed it to work with digital controllers. So I'm ending up kind of tapping the steering wheel. Once you tap it kind of stays in the same direction you're going. Oh my goodness. Okay, yeah, it's hard. All right, yeah, getting the hang of it. All right, ran out of time. So anyway, a whole lot of fun with the wireless controller. Uh, kind of cool how that works. All right, so I've got another interesting thing to show you. Well, all right, I got my Gravis GamePad Pro, which is a PC controller up and running with the same program I was using in the adapter uh, with the PS3 controller. So uh, we'll give that Mega 3D Noah's Ark a try. There we go. So this is your action button and your secondary button's right here. And I think the third button's right here. Uh, if you press these two at the same time, you go back to the main menu, it's that home button press. And this I think will get a start button press in the game. It's just that shoulder button. Okay. Ah, button three, or the one on the bottom did the opening of the door. like we just put a goat to sleep. I think that's the idea here. Don't kill the animals. Just try to get them to go to sleep so we can put them on the ark. Uh-oh. That was fun. Not. <laughs> this game is kind of funny. All right, here we go. 
I've never been so afraid of a goat in my life. I seem to be out of... Oh, I'm now punching goats, I think. Oh, maybe I punched these? No? I'm looking for more weapons. Maybe that's weapons over there. Hmm. Is that it? Got some health. Okay. Hmm. As you can tell, this is a terribly exciting game. All right. So yeah, let's let's go on to the Tron controller. We'll try maybe try something else. Okay. So I got my Tron stick uh, multi controller hooked up, and we're gonna play a little Quantum, and that's our fire button on the Tron stick. Go ahead and get into the game this way. It's just a single fire button game. So we'll see how it plays. I hope we have some fun with this. Ah, went too, too quick toward him. All right, fun game. All right, so yeah, you know, you could get probably really good at that game with a lot of practice, and I'm sure that was a quarter sucker in the arcades. Okay, so let's just try one more controller, the C64 joystick. This is a USB controller, lots and lots of buttons. I've got this uh, running with the... Uh, GPC script for the PS3 or the Hypercon Trooper 2 and we'll see how it goes. I'm going to play a little Desert Falcon which is a two button game and I've, I've got it set up so that the primary button is here and the secondary button is also here on the left side so you can just bounce right over to it when you need it. So I, I think that'll make it kind of excellent. Hopefully. Alright. I'm going to play on standard mode. Okay, I just went invis invincible with my superpower up there. And it just gives you a limited time of invincibility. There we got him. Just have to run into your enemy to knock him down. I'm gonna start collecting more of these. It still says I'm invincible. Oh, now I'm not. I'm gonna have to start firing to destroy enemies now. I can't just run into them. Ah, got me. Kind of like Zaxxon for the 7800. Oh, there's a hier hieroglyphics. That's what we're after here. Ah, I missed it. Can't back up. All right. Okay. Now, for those of you who are interested in the Cronus Zen and getting it working with my Atari VCS joystick, I'm going to just go ahead and start up the uh, segment on where I'll show you how to get this working, whether it be the Cronus Max Plus or the Cronus Zen in your laptop, getting the software set up. So we'll start with the Cronus Max Plus, and then we'll get uh, to demonstrating this one final time on another game, just to make sure you know the Cronus Zen will work. All right, so uh, here we go. Okay, before we do the Chronos Zen, I want to do the Chronos Max Plus setup. So this is for Hypercon Trooper 2 and PS3 and PC compatible USB controllers. Let's get started. 
So there's a link in the description to get you to where you need to go. You're going to download the Cronus Pro software. You won't download the Zen software. Now, once you've got that downloaded, you can go to the online library and type in the word Hyperkin. And I have created a GPC script, which is what you need. It's a little firmware that will run inside your Cronus Pax Plus. So this script can be downloaded. And once you've downloaded it, you want to go to the compiler window and you will see the entire program and some description of what it's about. So it just says new, so I'm going to actually rename it, and I right-clicked that to get to it. And I typed in Hypergen Trooper 2 Cronus Max Plus program. Okay, so now it's renamed, and we're going to go ahead and go to the programmer screen. And up there in the upper left box, it says Hypergen Trooper 2 uh, Cronus Max Plus script. So I'm going to drag that and drop it over into one of my Cronus memory slots. I already have four that have stuff in them, but I've got to put it over there on five. So once it's over there, then you can click on Program Device, and you'll see this window pop up. Just press OK. And then once it does it, then you can click on Finish. And you can go up here to Tools, and there it is, and go down to Options. And once you're in options, you're going to see this. Um, you can be on the general blade, file association, device, or CMAX Plus. I'm going to click on device. Output protocol should be set as PS4. So make sure you do that. And there's a, a PS3 controller plugged into the Cronus Max Plus. So make sure you've got it plugged in. And you can actually now test by going to the device monitor. And it will show a screen, once you've clicked on that, that will indicate you know, what your PS3 controller is doing for input, and then your PS4 is the output. And it's pretty easy to see that. Now, I want to go to the Cronus Max Plus setup for Atari VCS joystick next. Let's go ahead and uh, type in Atari VCS. And there are two of those. One is for Cronus Zen. If you read in that description, you'll see which one is. And the other one actually says Cronus Max Plus. Uh, that's the one you're after here. So you click on the download button and there's the little mini program. It's really not very involved or complicated. And that says new. We're going to right click and save it as Atari VCS Joystick Cronus Max Plus Script. So once you've got that um, delineated, we're going to go back to that compiler window or program window and highlight the program in the upper left box and drag and drop it over to, I put it on memory slot number six. I clicked program device. Now you click finish. Once you've finished, you can go back over to tools. Let's go over there. I've highlighted that. And once you've clicked on that, you go to options as you had done before. Okay. And again, you got those blades, general file association device and CMAX plus, and you want to go to device and select PS4 as your output protocol. Make sure that's always set as a PS4. Then you can hit uh, the tools again, hit device monitor, and then you can actually take a look at what your PS3 controller is recognized doing, and also your output is set to be PS4 there as well. Now I'm going to move on to do the Cronus Zen setup for the Atari VCS joystick and PS3 DualShock 3. It's specific to the PS3 DualShock 3. Now again, see the link in the description for getting this uh, firmware. You're going to want to click on the download for the Cronus Zen software, Zen Studio. And then you can download it into your computer. This is what the icon's going to look like once you've downloaded that. And it's going to have a welcome screen. You just click on Next. And you're going to put this in your computer. You want to allow the app to make uh, changes to your device? Absolutely, yes. And you're going to click, um, you're actually going to scroll down in this menu. I went to the bottom. The very bottom one says Zen Studio. So highlight that and then click Install into that folder. And it says Completing Zen Studio Setup. And click the Finish. And that is going to be your icon. And that's what you'll aim to click each and every time you want to open that up. And once you've got your software up and running, you'll see a message, Cronus Zen not found. So you're going to want to plug it in. And you plug it in with the uh, mini USB into the side of the uh, Cronus Zen. Now, once it's up there, you're going to go to the library and type into the search window Atari. 
And there you're going to see my script that I had created, the Atari VCS USB joystick. And you want to uh, select the one that says Cronus Zen in the description, not the Cronus Max Plus version that I was just showing there, but the one that's for the Cronus Zen. Oh, and by the way, you're going to see right there, it says talking about updating the firmware. I'm going to put a link below in the description. We're not going to go through that here, but you can easily do that. All right. So anyway, once you've got that upgraded, then you can click on the download button, the Chronos Zen Atari, Atari VCS uh, script, and you'll go to the compiler. Once you're in the compiler, you'll see the script has been downloaded. Then you're going to select which memory slot you're going to put it into. You're going to actually select this GPC scripts circle right here. And there it is up at the top. You're going to drag and drop that down to the selected uh, memory slot. And once I, I just chose slot number one, once it's there, it'll show up there. Now click device and you're going to go over here to make sure the output protocol is set up for, again, PlayStation 4 in emulator mode right there. Now go to M and K settings and make sure PlayStation 4 game profile is selected. And now go back to the programmer and now press program device. Now go back to device where you can select device monitor and you can actually see your device in action. I've got the Atari VCS uh, controller. I'm now pushing it, its joystick in different directions. It, it does work. Its input is Xbox 360. Output is PS4. Okay, so I've got the Cronus Zen connected and the Atari VCS controller joystick is plugged in. Uh, there's something you should know about this controller. This has two modes, okay? It's got the VCS mode, okay? We are not going to use that mode. When it's in that mode, um, it's not going to work well with this uh, adapter. So we want to put it in PC mode. If it is in, let's say, VCS mode, you want to take it out of that mode by holding these two buttons for about, I don't know, three, four, five seconds straight, and then this thing will blink, the little guide button blinks a couple times, then you know you've switched modes. So it has to be in PC mode. Um, and anyway, um, I've got it up and running here. You can actually control things in the menus, and we'll go ahead and play Alpha 1, and it's basically major havoc. Um, you're gonna search out space stations, and uh, hopefully uh, get out in time before it blows up. So we'll go ahead and get the game started here. So it's got a little breakout game that you can play in between levels, which is kind of nice. Well, I think the episode is coming to a close and I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I mean, I tried a whole lot of different controllers on this uh, Game Station Pro and got them working, quite a few of them actually. There were a few that I did try that didn't end up working. I have this old ancient uh, Nintendo made PC controller. It's actually got a 15 pin game port connector and I thought, well, maybe if I plug it into this game port to USB adapter, it's called a USB Nest, that we could get this actually working on the GameStation Pro. But uh, it just wouldn't work. I, there was different modes on this. I was trying to click the button or the switch 
and uh, just it couldn't work. So, you know, not all PC compatible controllers are going to work with this method. In fact, it's probably more um, frequent that you'll find a controller on the PC that's not going to work with this. In fact, I found one. Uh, and this is unfortunate, but I was trying to get the Atari USB fight stick working on the GameStation Pro. And it actually, I got it working, but it kept stopping working as I would play the games. I'm not sure why the Cronus Max Plus made uh, it had an issue with it, but uh, it just would work for a while. And, you know, 30 seconds into the game, it just stopped working. And I have to unplug it and replug it. Anyway, it's just not a functional joystick to use on this system, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, it would have been nice. I did try a variety of different ways of connecting it with no luck. So yeah, some PC controllers just not going to work and others will. So anyway, if you um, do try this and you find a PC controller that tends to be working that you thought maybe wouldn't, uh, let us know in the comments below. I will we'll add to the controller list and uh, I can put that in the description uh, below so you can check that out uh, over the course of time. All right. And you know, I've got some upcoming videos that are going to prove to be pretty interesting, um, one of which has to do with using a variety of controllers on the Atari Jaguar. I don't think anybody's been using a variety of controllers on the Jaguar. Usually you're just stuck with the main one. Uh, but you know, uh, I've got new ways of doing things with Blissbox products. These Blissbox products are called Gamer Pro Advanced as well as the Blissbox Bridge. When they're combined together, you get some really interesting ways of playing games. I've also got an Atari 5200 episode on the way that has, again, to do with using a variety of controllers, unique controllers, to play some of those games. So stay tuned. If you guys haven't subscribed, definitely give me a subscribe, give me a thumb up, and uh, click that bell so you can get notified when new videos come up. I am going to be doing another GameStation Pro video that has to do with a very large controller. I won't give it up what it is, but uh, I will be using that controller to play some of my Atari GameStation Pro games, and I think you guys might be really liking that video. All right, so I think we've covered it. You guys have a great time gaming out there, and take care. Thank <music> you.